I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and today we're going to talk about the Endocrine Society Guideline on Vitamin D, the question of who to test and when to test for vitamin D, as well as when to recommend vitamin D, comes up frequently. There have been a lot of studies. Many clinicians I know have lots of opinions about this, but I haven't seen a lot of clear evidence-based guidance. This much-needed guideline provides that guidance. Though I'm not sure that everyone is going to be happy with what the guidelines say and not everyone is going to agree with the recommendations, please put your thoughts in the comment section below. That said, it's important to realize that the society did conduct a comprehensive assessment and systematic review of the evidence that was very impressive and well done. For our discussion today, I will focus on recommendations for non-pregnant adults. The assumption that overlies all of the recommendations is that individuals are already getting the Institute of Medicine's recommended amount of vitamin D, which is um, 600 international units daily for individuals 50 to 70 years of age and 800 IUs daily for those above 80. Let's start with adults 18 to 74 who do not have prediabetes. We'll talk about prediabetes later. The guidelines suggest against routine testing for vitamin D deficiency and recommend against routine supplementation. For the older part of this cohort, that is adults 50 to 74, there is abundant randomized trial evidence showing that there is little or no significant differences with vitamin D supplementation on the outcomes of fracture, cancer, cardiovascular disease, kidney stones, or mortality. While supplementation is safe, there does not appear to be any benefit to routine supplementation or testing in this group. It is important to note that the trials were done in populations that were meeting the daily recommended intake of vitamin D and who did not have a low vitamin D level at baseline. So individuals not fitting into those groups may consider vitamin D supplementation. Next up, for adults with prediabetes, which is about a third of the United States population, it is recommended that to reduce the risk of prediabetes to diabetes, vitamin D supplementation be recommended. A number of trials have looked at vitamin D supplementation for adults with prediabetes, in addition, of course, to lifestyle modification, diet, and exercise. Vitamin D decreases the risk of progression from prediabetes to diabetes by about 10 to 15 percent. The effect may be greater in those who are over age 60 and in those who have a lower initial vitamin D level. Now let's talk about older adults, specifically those 75 and older, where there is a separate recommendation. In this age group, low levels of vitamin D are common. Uh, about 20% of older adults have low vitamin D levels. The guidelines suggest against testing for vitamin D levels in this age group and recommend in favor of empiric vitamin D supplementation for all adults 75 and older. While observational studies have shown a relationship between low vitamin D levels in this age group and adverse outcomes, including falls, fractures, and respiratory infection, evidence from randomized placebo-controlled trials of vitamin D supplementation have been inconsistent with regard to benefit. That said, a meta-analysis has shown that vitamin D lowers mortality compared to placebo with a relative risk of 0.96. The confidence interval here is interesting. It goes from 0.93 to 1. There was no difference in effect according to setting, that is community setting versus institutional or nursing home. There was no difference in effect uh, according to vitamin D dosage or baseline vitamin D levels. There appeared to be a benefit of low-dose vitamin D supplementation on fall risk, with possibly greater fall risk, though, 
when high-dose supplementation was used. There was no significant effect on fracture with vitamin D alone, there, though, though there was a decrease in fractures when vitamin D was combined with calcium. In the studies that looked at calcium in addition to vitamin D, the mean calcium dose was 1,000 milligrams per day. So, based on the probability of, and I'll quote here, a slight decrease in all-cause mortality, unquote, and its safety, as well as possible benefits to decrease falls, the recommendation is to supplement all adults 75 and older. Since there was not a consistent difference by vitamin D level, the recommendation is that testing for vitamin D levels is not necessary. Let's now discuss dosage. The guidelines recommend a lower daily, lower dose daily vitamin D over non-daily higher dose vitamin D. Unfortunately, the guidelines don't specify a specific dose of vitamin D. The supplementation dose used in trials of adults 75 and older ranged from 400 IUs to 300, I'm sorry, 3,333 IUs daily with an average dose of 900 IUs daily. So it seems to me that a dose of 1,000 to 2,000 international units daily is a reasonable choice for older adults. In the pre-diabetes trial, a higher average dose was used in the trials with a mean of 3,500 IUs daily, so a higher dose might make sense in this group. I know this is an area where a lot of us have had a lot of experience and have a lot of opinion. I'm interested in your thoughts about these guidelines. I'm interested in how you approach this topic and what you think is correct. Please leave your thoughts in the comments section below. I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and this is Medscape.